every football Saturday here in Stillwater, the streets are lined with tailgates. For some, it's just a mere way to pass time until the big game. For others, it means much more. So 25 years ago, my brother-in-law and my parents and I decided to cook some bratwurst at a football game just north of the stadium. And here we are today with uh, 100 of our closest family and friends with a different menu every week. Every tailgate, it's my kids come back, they're working, they're all kind of spread out in Oklahoma. Um, my father-in-law comes, my mom and dad come, my uncles, and so we have all this family shows up. So it's almost kind of like tailgate for, for us is a little bit like a little mini family reunion every time. No family reunion would be complete without the food. We, we provide the, the one main spot, the meal. So it's like today was fish fry. Everybody else brings their own beverages and their own side dish. Uh, kind of a community deal. Uh, we'll do gumbo sometimes, we've done chili. Uh, we do ribs, um, all kinds of different things like that. And so then usually about an hour before the game and after that game time starts and we all cruise, go to the game. He does an amazing giant pot of gumbo every year. He and my sister spend a lot of time in Louisiana and he makes a, a, an amazing pot of gumbo. In fact, I have friends that come from tailgates all over campus just to eat that gumbo. For John Stobie, deciding on what food to provide is part of the tailgating process. So generally uh, a week or two before the season starts, uh, a group of us get together, the main guys, Brett and Craig and, and uh, Chris and I, we'll all get together and uh, we have tailgate planning weekend and we'll go through the whole schedule and we'll just kind of plan out, okay, we're going to do chicken legs, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. This week's special was a fish fry, caught fresh specifically for the Stoby tailgate. We have a, a fishing tournament during the summer. We have a bunch of guys out, catch all kinds of fish. Uh, most of this is crappie. Uh, we'll also have some sand bass and a little bit of catfish with it. But we just kind of collect fish over the over the summer and have a couple fish fries. Is there a timeline on the fish that you catch? Um, like when, when are you catching these fish and are you kind of holding them on your own until this day comes? Or how does that Yeah, really um, actually some of it probably came just a, a week or two ago. Some of it's probably been in the freezer for several months. So. Yeah. What time does this start, and uh, what time is your kind of goal to have this all done and out? For well, the hopefully program? before game time. Gotcha. So we started a little bit early, so yeah. hopefully we'll get everything cooked up by time to get into the game, get right things on. cooled down. John's dedication to providing for his guests and time to make it inside for kickoff is the utmost priority. Sometimes it's out of his control to join the festivities in the stands. I went on all this streak of 99 games straight and then I got food poisoning the night before on a Friday night and uh, didn't make that game and it was the second game I've missed. John may have missed two games but over the last 25 years the Stobie tailgate hasn't missed a season. It's a tradition he hopes to continue for generations to come. We, we add little things here and there. Probably the biggest transition will get to the point where um, you know, will either one of all of our kids stick around, be around town, be around Stillwater or whatever, and be able to, to start, you know, taking over the, the spot where I'm not the only one that has to store everything and keep everything. The longevity was, because it wasn't just a, a corporate deal where it's got set up, or it wasn't just, um, you know, one guy just doing it. It's, it's this family project that's happened all these years. For State Magazine, I'm Dallas Haggerty.